Well, this has been about a 15 year process. It started back in 1995 when we sequenced the first two genomes in history, uh, including the smallest genome, that of Mycoplasma genitalium. And we set out a goal to try and understand what the smallest uh, genome you could have as an operating system to try and understand the basic components of life. It's taken us through this uh, long uh, journey, much longer than we ever anticipated. Uh, but that's what happens when you enter into areas that nobody's ever been before. So we, first we had to learn how to write the genetic code to synthesize pieces. Because the largest piece that ever has been synthesized other than our work has been only uh, 30,000 letters. Uh, the first chromosome we were trying to make was over 500,000. And the one that we ultimately made and report in this paper is over one million letters of genetic code. And we start with four bottles of chemicals and the computer code uh, in the computer, uh, the digital code in the computer uh, from DNA sequence. So just learning how to do the synthesis was mastering a lot of chemistry that has never been done before. And we learned sequentially over the years how to build larger and larger molecules. Uh, in 2003, we reported uh, making a 5,000 letter bacterial virus, uh, Phi X174, and how to error correct the pieces. So we start with uh, pieces of DNA uh, coming off DNA synthesizers. They're only about uh, 50 to 80 letters long. That's pretty much the limit of what you can make uh, with a chemical synthesizer. So everything we make from that has to be putting these little pieces together much like having a, a, a box of Legos and having to assemble them uh, back in the right order uh, to get what you started with. So it's been progressive over this entire time period. Uh, we thought we would have this uh, almost three years ago, but uh, we kept running into very significant biological roadblocks. All right, and what do you ultimately hope to do with a method like this? Well, this is an important step, uh, we think, both uh, scientifically and philosophically. It certainly changed my views of definitions of life uh, and how life works. Uh, it's pretty stunning when you just replace the DNA software in a cell, and the cell instantly starts reading that new software, starts making a whole different set of proteins, and within a short while, all the characteristics of the first species disappear and a new species emerges from the software uh, that controls that cell going forward. When we look at life forms, we see them as sort of fixed entities. But this shows, in fact, how dynamic they are, that they change from second to second, and that life is basically uh, a result of an information process, a software process. Our genetic code is our software. Uh, and our cells are dynamically, constantly reading that genetic code, making new proteins. The proteins make the other cellular components, and that's what we see. But it's hard to imagine how dynamic it is until we found simply by replacing the software, it started making a whole new uh, cell, whatever is defined by that software. So that's, that's a pretty important change in how we approach and think about life. Uh, also, this is now the first time where we've started with information in the computer, built that software molecule, uh, now over a million letters of genetic code, put that into a recipient cell and had this process start where that information converted that cell into a new species. So this becomes a very powerful tool for trying to design what we want biology to do. Uh, we have a wide range of applications, uh, so at the biotech company that funded this, Synthetic Genomics, that Ham Smith and I started a few years back. We have a major deal with ExxonMobil to try and use algae to capture carbon dioxide and make new hydrocarbons that can go into the Exxon refineries to try and replace taking oil out of the ground. There's no natural algae that we know that can do this at the scale that's needed. So we're going to have to use our synthetic genomic techniques to either heavily modify existing algaes or develop whole new ones from scratch that have all the parameters that we want. These same tools, these same processes can be used for making chemicals, for making food substances, we hope for cleaning up water. Uh, but perhaps the most important uh, immediate application is uh, uh, we're already uh, working at the 